What's your strategy? You know, that's a good question. The workout we're about to watch Travis Mayer do is from Saturday in week one of our season prep cycle, which will lead all the way through into the open. Our goal with this training cycle is to give all of our athletes a little bit more dose of CrossFit related Metcon. So you're going to see more AMRAPs for timepieces, chippers, and then our strength work while still being linear, we're going to make sure that you're still doing heavy strength lifts will also kind of lead more into a CrossFit-esque feel. You're going to see some strength endurance work or shuttle runs and burpees into heavy snatches and some fatigue-based work into heavy cleans. The goal being to prepare you both for the open and quarterfinals. So Travis Mayer, he's going to demo a workout that looks very similar to 21.1, one of the open workouts that introduced wall walks into the CrossFit community. And it will go like this, four time, six wall walks, 30 double unders, 12 wall facing handstand pushups, 60 double unders, 12 wall walks, 90 double unders, 24 strict handstand pushups, 150 double unders, 18 wall walks, and then it will finish out with 210 double unders. The goal here obviously is to simulate an open style workout. We want our athletes to have a pacing plan before they go in and then make sure that they execute on that. And we encourage everyone to video review. So watch Travis's demo first and then come up with your own game plan before you crush this workout. Let's go see Travis's strategy. Let's go see Travis's strategy. I was just going to use me, but Oh, that's fine. I thought you were talking to me. What's your strategy? You know, that's a good question. Our, uh, there's a lot of wall walks for your boy, so I'm going to be smooth on the old wall walk from the beginning. To conserve my energy, break up my handstand push ups just to be smart. Try to keep the double unders all unbroken because that's my jam. And then just cruise through it to a phenomenal time at the end because we're here to just enjoy fitness. All right, let's see how it works out for All you. All right, let me turn on the music ladder, please. No, Trav, he needs his music up. <laughs> he needs his music up, and this is way more positive than he normally is in workouts. He's like, I'm enjoying my fitness. So this one, obviously, is a shoulder burner. For those that aren't great at double unders, it's going to be a double shoulder burner because if you're inefficient, your shoulders are going to burn on the double unders and all the wall walks and handstand push-ups that you're going to do. Travis knows his time when he's doing wall walks. He's around five to five and a half seconds per rep when he's going at a pretty fast clip, which is what he's averaging right now. For some people, they don't. And so my first recommendation before you do a workout like this is come up with a game plan knowing your times, your splits on movement. So for example, you should know how long a wall walk takes you or how long 30 double unders, 60 double unders, 90 double unders takes so you can come up with a better pacing plan. So that first set was what, like 35 seconds, Chris? You're mm -hmm. watching it. Yep. Um, so basically a little over five seconds per rep when he's doing those, and now he's immediately onto his double unders. One of the things that I think is really impressive about elite level athletes is their transitions are always like really fast and focused. But for some of us, I would recommend picking one that's going to be a fast transition and another one maybe you slow down a little bit just based on how enduring your shoulders are. Like Travis can move fast because his double unders are so good and his handstand pushups are good. For some people though, they know the wall walks are gonna be really hard. So push hard on the double unders and then maybe take a little longer break before you get back to the wall. Is he gonna go unbroken? Of course we he is. will see. Yeah, this is, you know, there are 36 total wall walks in this workout, which is actually less than 21.1. I think there were like 55 in that workout, but we've added handstand push ups, which makes this just as challenging on the shoulders. The reason I bring that up though is 36 wall walks is still quite a bit and going unbroken on the handstand pushups may not be a good strategy for some. Now, some people will just say, I'm gonna go as fast as I can until I kind of blow up and then go by feel. I would recommend though, maybe going a little bit smoother on your handstand pushups so that you can go faster in your wall walks because that's a longer movement. There's bigger, more separation on the wall walks than there are on the handstand pushups for, for most people in this workout. So what that may look like is I do my six wall walks, I go do my double unders. When I come back to the wall facing handstand pushups, I'm going to break those up even if I don't need to. I'm going to do six. I'll kick down, do another six. Of course, some people may say, no, I, that takes too much time kicking down and get, coming back up. But you just need to think about the, the 12 and the 18 wall walks later on in the workout. 60 unbroken there. Back on the wall here. Yeah, so for Travis, 60 double under reps take about 30 seconds. Like he's moving, you know, basically about you, you could cut his reps in half and that's the time that it's taking him essentially. So when he gets to his 120 or excuse me, 90 reps will take him 45 seconds or 150 will take him 75 seconds. 
for those that aren't as good at double unders, they probably have around the same speed, but they're going to trip a little bit more. So you just need to keep that in mind. I'm breaking the double unders up because if they blow my shoulders up, I'm just not very efficient. For Travis, he's so good at them. He needs to sprint that so that he can make up some time before he gets back to the wall. You can actually see here, he's already hitting a little bit of shoulder fatigue. His rest between reps is still really solid. I mean, <laughs> he's a games level athlete. But if you watch maybe, I don't know, an Alexis or someone like that who's amazing at wall walks, she'd probably cut down a second per rep just because of the rest time here. So just keep that in mind. <laughs> I love his face. What was he thinking at this point, Chris? I wasn't there when he I, did it. I know at the end he's going to tell me that his um, shins hurt, his calves are blown Going up, up yeah, from the, the wall, wall yeah. or from the double unders? I'm wanting to say it's from the wall. It may be something else that he did that day. Travis is, is training pretty hard right now. I could be misremembering. We'll see it at the end. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Do you know what rep he's on here, Chris? I lost count. Yeah. But uh, he's close. He's, he's close to, the, to finishing the, um, the 12 wall walks. So again, if you're averaging five and a half seconds per rep, you're talking about 75-ish seconds or, or a little bit more for 12. For most people, they average five to five and a half seconds per rep to start a workout. So let's say the first six, but then all of a sudden that pace goes to seven, eight, nine seconds per rep because of the rest in between. That's why I said earlier that wall walk efficiency matters so much in these types of workouts because they're big, dense sets. And if you blow up in the middle, you're going to lose a minute or two minutes to the field. You can see that this transition actually is a little bit slower than his last few. He knows he can do these unbroken, though. And his, again, his cadence is just really, really good. His, I think most people at this point will do unbroken or could. Um, most higher level athletes can do these unbroken and feel okay. I think even for those, though, that are good at double unders, there's no harm in breaking double unders in a workout like this because if you take a five-second break, it doesn't hurt you in the grand scheme of things. Whereas if you do them unbroken and you blow up on the double unders where your handstand push-ups slow down, the next one, that's a huge loss Yeah, because they're all connected, right? Right. We always talk about separation value, and that concept is basically like which movements can you make up the most time or which movements can you lose the most time on. And double unders, that it's not that unless you just can't do double unders. But also, do you think a lot of people get tricked because they say I can do ninety double unders, or I do, or take any movement, I can do this, but they're not uh, taking into account what it's paired with. Exactly, and what the compounding effect is of the next movement. So again, ninety double unders straight into handstand pushups. For most people, even if you just did one set of that, the double unders play a huge role. So I'm I'm breaking them up. I would probably even on the ninety do thirty, thirty, and thirty to be completely honest, and that may be overly conservative for elite level athletes, but for an athlete that's just trying to make quarterfinals or an athlete that's trying to get from quarterfinals to semifinals, you could do that and be perfectly fine in this workout. You did eight there, I think. Yeah, so there's 24 total handstand pushups. And again, I actually, just watching a couple people test this as we wrote the workout, I think this is probably a little worse on the shoulders than 21.1. There was a ton of wall walks like we already talked about in that workout, but this with the wall facing handstand pushups and the strict handstand pushups, it just is a, the, the, that compounding effect of different kind of um, shoulder fatigue points that hit you, especially when we get to the next set of wall walks, which will be 18 total. I think that was another eight. And he, he definitely hung up there for a minute to try to get an extra two. Is that, how do you know when to do that or to, to just come that's a That's a Travis thing. So Travis, um, he always has pacing strategies in his head, but he likes to go by feel. And I think many elite athletes are like that. They'll, they'll come up with a game plan of like, I'm going to do eight on this set, but maybe he feels good and he does 10 or he plans to do eight and then he decides to do six. I think he dropped a four on that one. So it's eight, eight, four. Right. But, but that's based on feel. He thought he was going to do eight, eight and eight to get to 24. He decides to do four because he knows he's about to fail. He's just so good at that. And here's the other thing. Elite athletes can do that and get away with it because they recover quickly. So he could do a set of four where it's like AMRAP minus one, which is one away from failure for him, but then recover within like 15 or 20 seconds. Yeah. For was, most people on handstand pushups, you cannot do that. So having a pacing strategy in place beforehand. And then what I always say is like a plan B, which is essentially like, it's not going to always go according to plan as everyone knows and just know like, okay, now I can go by feel. And now this uh, heel clicking here. <laughs> <laughs> this is the only strategy that you need. Is that, is that good or is that just a weird... Like yeah, it's, habit uh, he has, it's Dorothy from Wizard of the Oz. <laughs> Wizard I mean, he's of one, Oz. He's one of the best double unders in CrossFit, why right? I, why do I say Wizard of the Oz? Wizard of the Oz? Uh, Wizard of Oz, yeah. He is one of the best. He so, probably is the best double under -er in CrossFit. So is that something people should be doing? or <laughs> I actually, <laughs> Chicken this, or egg? this is a, a funny story. Uh, one of the first times I did a workout with Travis, we did double unders. I saw him. Do, he's done this forever. So this was 11 years ago or something like that, right? 
And I tried to do it and it just didn't work for me. So uh, who knows if it's the chicken or the egg. Um, he's just really good. He's got great bounding mechanics. He has a really good shoulder position here. It actually looks like his shoulders are off. Like he's kind of dumped down on his right side, but I think it's just his shirt is, is slid that, over. That tank top though, yeah, huh? The, 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 he's looking jacked. Um, and you could see where his body line is and then also where his hands are the entire time. There's not a ton of movement. It's coming from the wrist, maybe a little bit from the elbow. Whereas if you watch me do double unders, my hands start flaring out the side and everyone that's bad at double unders knows what I'm talking about. The, the hands get wider and wider and wider. And then you're spinning from your shoulder as opposed to spinning from your wrist. When you spin from your shoulder, your shoulders get tired and in a workout like this, that exposes you big time. All right. When I was uh, filming him here, I was thinking, oh my God, this is going to be fucking forever. <laughs> like, <laughs> like this is just going to take another 10 years. Well, I mean, it is going to take a while even and for so him. And so I bet a lot of people who are in this workout are probably like, oh man, 18, really? So yeah. what do we do here, Brandon? Well, so here's the thing. The 21.1, which is the playoff of this, right? Had 21 wall walks to finish. So this is 18. It's a little bit less, but again, you did the handstand pushups. You're still doing a ton of double unders. Pacing is critical here. And when we go back to that concept of separation value, I think that this is where the separation happens in this workout. Now, others may lose time on the handstand pushups or earlier set of wall walks, but the elite level athletes, whoever can sustain the speed here is going to win this workout, assuming that they can not just bomb on their double unders at the end. That was four reps before he made a T. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see if he can do another four reps before he makes another T. I actually, by the way, this is like going on a tangent, but I think that the moving the hands around like he's doing makes a lot of sense. Having your hands in that posture where he is now, where his palms are on the ground and elbows are high, continues to, or it keeps you in a tense state, which is really hard to recover. So dropping your hands real quick or going to the T, that's perfectly fine. Just have it as a game plan. This is, I, I say this a lot and that's probably people get annoyed by it, but like training should look exactly like the way that you compete, play around with how you would do it in a competition. So for him right now, if it's every four, I'm going to make a T or every four, I'm going to relax my hands or go to my knees. There's nothing wrong with doing that in training. Just start taking some notes about it and know that that's my game plan. That's my strategy. And then the goal would be now I can do every five without making a T or every six without doing, you know, going to my knees, but have that as a game plan. So you know exactly what it feels like when you actually compete or when you're doing a qualifier. So that was nine. I think there his, um, his hands are doing the same things or the same steps every single time. He's doing a good job getting back down to the line quickly without his feet hitting the, the, the mat, which is important because that's a no rep. Um, there's a little shuffle with his hands, which uh, is, just comes with more fatigue. I think he's doing the right things with his feet. If you've ever been to one of our camps or if you're in our online program, Compete, you can go and watch some of Mia's tip videos on wall walks. And one of the things she likes is like a real aggressive jump up the wall. He kind of does a, a soft jump. So you'll see on this next one, kind of wait until he gets into it. He starts. Watch what his feet do here. A little hop and then up. If you watch, let's say Alexis or again, Mia, our coach for intermediate path and compete, she talks about a little bit more of an aggressive hop up the wall, just to get you in a really strong position. It makes it easier on your feet too, to get all the way up. There's just little things that you can play with to make movements more efficient. And the more efficient you are, essentially you're using less effort per rep, which helps when you're not as fit as Travis. All right. So at rep seven, 10, and now 13, he's, you know, sat up on his knees. We're going for 14 here. Yeah, I mean, I think that's a good strategy. I, I, I never have a problem. P people always complain, like, why are your hands on your knees? Or, you know, why are you taking a break? Look, if it's a strategic break and it's going to allow you to go faster in the workout, do it. Like, don't, that, that whole concept that we have to do big unbroken sets in, in the sport of CrossFit makes no sense to me. Like, t do, do shorter reps or smaller sets with shorter rests, and you're going to win workouts. You don't have to go super fast on any specific thing three, four, five. So now he's taking five steps back. It's getting a little bit more inefficient. This is normal. And you know, if you went back and watched everyone in 21.1 on their uh, 15 wall walks or 21 wall walks, everyone went from, you know, three steps back or maybe four steps back to five and six steps back. The best in the sport at wall walks would probably still only do three or four uh, steps. And when I say steps, I mean like the hand movement all the way back to that, that back line. But Travis is a little bit bigger of an athlete, probably weighs like 205 pounds, and uh, it's a little bit harder for him. I think this is the last one here. Oh, yeah. One more. Oh, wait, one more. <laughs> the head on the ground. You know, this is the worst thing about wall walks. If you're in a dirty gym, your face is straight on the mat. Uh, we clean stuff around here, though. Don't worry about it. All right. That was 18. 
So he, here is another potential separator. The wall walks would be the biggest one, but 210 double unders at the end of a workout is, is significant. And I remember watching a lot of people in the open workout a couple of years ago, which this is a playoff of, that got to the double unders around the same time and then lost a bunch of time because they just blew up, let's say at 110 or 120 reps. And I also remember Travis doing this and he did them all unbroken at the end, which is a, I mean, it's just, it's so nice when you have really efficient movements and especially with something like double unders where it's simple and it's fast, but it can, I mean, like for me, I could not do 210 unbroken at the end of this workout, even if I like my life depended on it, I would just end up tripping at some point. So continue to work on your double unders. It's one of those simple movements. It's been in almost every single open. It's worth having really good double unders. The sport is testing crossover singles and crossover doubles and heavy double unders. But still, this is the simplest form of fitness. And I think that this is the best way to test them. And you can see, I mean, his body lines are still just, he's just really good. <laughs> I don't want to keep, um, you know, tooting his horn, but it's, it, it is impressive. Whereas, you know, like just go on YouTube and watch someone else do a, a, an open workout with double unders. You'll see arms that are feel, flailing and feet that are piking up. And, you know, some of the common mistakes would be, again, arms coming out too wide. Their feet are kicking straight up, like toward his torso, as opposed to just bounding straight up and down people that are jumping way too high or people that try to jump really short to speed up, but that actually causes it to be more inefficient. I don't know. What, what is he doing there with his head? Did you see the little head tick we got going on? He's just flexing. <laughs> like, look at this. Look how easy this is for me. I think we're getting close here. You know, the, I think this is my least favorite movement to count. If oh, you're yeah. counting these reps, Chris, no, I, I, that's why I never judge. <laughs> I hate it. Uh, for those that are still listening at this point, 2018, there was the workout. Oh, he missed Oh, he did. Oh, my goodness. I was just going to start talking because I assume there's nothing else to talk about in a workout like this with him just doing unbroken double unders. 2018, the workout that had 800 double unders if you finished it. I don't know if you remember this one, Chris, but that was, I judged him and that was a nightmare at having to count 800 total double unders. Oh, and that then workout. people repeated it? Yeah, yes. Forget yeah, that. Yeah. I think, didn't he do that one a bunch? He know, probably he did. did. But anyway. Wow. All right. One break. Well done. Hello, Christopher. Uh, if you're good at double unders, use that as the recovery. Um, I knew for me that was my strong area, so I knew I would be taking more breaks on the wall walks and stuff. So pick a number on the wall walks, unless you know you're like Alexis and can do all of them without a problem with no hesitation. But I'd pick a small number, three, try to get to three, then shake it out. Find a good cadence with your hand step position. Like it, as you're warm up, like find a good rhythm. Um, and then break the handstand push-ups when you get to the wall facing strict and the strict itself, like the compound of all the movements adding up at that point from the wall walk into the strict, back into the wall walk. That set of 24 strict felt way harder than a normal set of 24. How will most people mess up a workout like this? Uh, way longer breaks on the wall probably. Um, I think an easy area to make up a lot of ground is like if your double unders are smooth. Um, by just not breaking a lot and not needing the break. Um, you can definitely catch up a lot of time on that, but I think a lot of times people will do one and they think they're resting five to six seconds, but they're resting 20 seconds and just not knowing. And if you have an issue with that, I'd say have somebody count for you if that's something you struggle with. Um, I know in the past that's something I've struggled with, so I've had workouts where I have Max, Adam, or somebody in here count the rest period that I'm taking in between movements. Um, I feel like I've been doing it long enough that I kind of have an idea of what I'm at, but there's days where I'm at 12 to 15 seconds where in my head I feel like I'm at four, right? So, but you do that over 10 transitions, that's 45 seconds. So those are the little areas that start to make up a big difference when you're competing and trying to get every little bit better. Um, but yeah, good luck, have fun, tear it up.